What's up fellow humans in the universe? I'm Ethan, a professional filmmaker, and this is the fourth video in my Filmmaking 101 series, but it could also double as the first video in my Writing 101 series. By the way, let's get to making some storytelling magic. Heads up, this video, like all the videos in this series, is timestamped, so click on the thingy thing down there anytime you want to skip to a certain section or chapter. And I'll link the playlist of our series so far down below in case you want to binge it. Okay, three-act structure is the most commonly used structure in Hollywood, but it can also be used for things like novels, shorts, and skits. The idea is simple. The first act establishes the world of the story. The second act is the rising action, where a main character or protagonist attempts to accomplish whatever it is they're trying to do, whether that be stopping a madman from killing off half the galaxy, stopping a madman from killing the entire galaxy, or throwing a magic ring in a volcano to defeat a dark lord. Because that makes sense. And the third act concludes the story's main plot. Usually. <laughs> For this video, I'm going to mostly be using the films Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and Star Wars The Force Awakens as case studies. One, because both of these films pretty much follow three-act structure down to the T, and two, because neither of these films is all that recent. And to properly analyze their plot structure, that means we're going to have major spoilers. So if you haven't seen these films yet and don't want them spoiled, this is your chance to pause the video now and go back and watch them before coming back. Okay, act one. This starts with an introduction to the world we're in. This is where we get things like exposition or info dumps where characters tell us things we need to know about the world, like the setting of the story, who's in charge, and what different factions or groups are up to. Some of these info dumps are hidden better than others. I'm going again. It's late. The race starts at dawn, you need the rest. But only the first seven runners across the line become members of the Chosen. This is also where we get neologisms, which is a fancy word for fantasy jargon like Skywalker, Azkaban, Stormtrooper, Hogwarts, Jakku, and other words that aren't in normal language. But even if we're not in a sci-fi or fantasy world, we still have to establish the world. Take a story about the law, for example. If it's a gritty crime drama, our protagonist might be a cop working hard to protect the city from criminals. This is a far cry from a superhero movie where the cops are basically just there to make the hero look cool and strong. And this is way different than a gangster movie where the cops are actually the bad guys trying to stop our main characters who are breaking the law. And this is way different than a kid's movie where cops are practically always one of the good guys. In other words, the world of the story changes based on whose eyes we're viewing it through. We also usually get to see a typical day for our protagonist in the first act. Then, near the end of Act 1, we get the inciting action or incident. This is the point of no return for our hero. Maybe they've been tasked with delivering a secret map to a group of rebels, or perhaps they've been alerted that a madman is on the loose from prison. He has escaped from Azkaban to find you and kill me. Now on to Act 2, the rising action, which is typically the longest act in a film, and it's where we constantly build on that inciting incident. Usually, the further forward we get in the story, the more information we'll get about the major plot point, or perhaps develop skills that will be useful later. This typically repeats itself on a we're getting closer, but oops, there's been a setback pattern until the end of Act 2, which is the next major turning point in the film. In the Act 2 ending or climax, our hero usually fails, often due to a major flaw they have, and will fall to their lowest point yet. And now we typically get what is called a recognition or a reversal, which is either where a character learns something they didn't know previously, whether that be information or a technique. You will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. Or they stumble upon good fortune somehow many times coming in the form of a plot twist. These can be rewarding for an audience when done well, if we see the clues and logic for a reversal, or feel like the characters earn the recognition. was somebody who, until quite recently, I believed to be dead. Who was it then? Peter Pettigrew. But if a recognition or reversal is done poorly, well... You're letting him kill Martha. Why did you say that name? Yeah, it's not great. Finally, we have Act 3, which is usually the shortest 
and most tightly action-packed one. Our protagonist, now armed with new power, knowledge, and plot armor, of course, takes on the antagonist in the climax and usually wins because they're the main character and the writer said so. All jokes aside, after our clash with the big baddie, we get our falling action, where things start calming down. Remember our inciting action from the first act? This is where it comes full circle if it wasn't concluded in the climax. And that's three act structure in a nutshell. So to recap, act one is the intro, act two is the meat of the story or the rising action, and act three is the big climax or conclusion. Alrighty, the next time we do a writing video, I'm thinking of maybe going over terms, not only stuff like protagonist, antagonist, uh, character arcs, but like delving deeper into stuff that people might not be as familiar with, like foils, super objectives, and beats. But our next video in the filmmaking series will be how to get good audio in your films. And then we'll go back to some visual stuff like lighting. So subscribe if you want to see when those drop. Until next time, peace. And to properly analyze their product. Work. Some of these info. Info. What's an info? Always the train. Never comes until I'm recording.